I'm Jeff Cornwall and this is The Entrepreneurial Mind. Today we're going to be talking with Susanna Herring about her new business, Hot Yoga Plus. We'll be back to talk with her after these words from our sponsor. Talkopolis, the social media TV network for your city. Welcome back. So Susanna, um, I think I know a little bit about Hot Yoga, uh, but Tell me just a little bit about, about what that is and, and what the plus is in terms of what you do. Sure. So we do yoga, a lot okay. of it, um, primarily in the heat. And so it's the same kind of yoga that we did back in the 60s where it's just the breathing and the stretching and the things m- my body won't do anymore. Okay? Pretty much. Except my, you do in the my heat. Best, my best client. I am. <laughs> yeah. We need to get you in there. Old guys with bad joints. Absolutely. Interesting. We'll make so, it better. So the, so the heat, what's the theory with the heat? Um, a couple of things with the heat. First of all, um, you sweat. So okay. the skin is actually the second largest eliminating organ in the body. So I can tell when people have been drinking the night before. Lots of detoxing going on in the studio. Um, but the other, you know, the big obvious one is that if you think about stretching outside in the cold versus stretching inside where it's warm, your, your muscles lengthen, easier to get deeper in the postures. Um, so how hot is it? We have different styles. The hottest will go is about 100, so we do some classes heated to about 100, and we'll add humidity if we need to. We keep the humidity about 30%. We do classes heated to 85, 85, 90, and then we do some that aren't heated. So we sort of have Mississippi, Arkansas, and then maybe... And then some non-heated. The Dakotas, yeah. (laughs) Exactly. All right. And what's the plus? So the plus is sort of an all-encompassing. We changed our name from Hot Yoga Nashville to Hot Yoga Plus to encompass multiple locations. Uh, we decided that we weren't going to be just in the city of Nashville, so we've got locations now across the state in uh, Memphis and Chattanooga as well. Also, we don't just do um, hot yoga. We do some non-heated, restorative, deep stretch classes. We also do retreats and teacher trainings. We have retail boutiques, so just sort of all-encompassing and also um, sort of a philosophical view of yoga that we believe in yoga for more yoga for more people is what we say a lot of times. Um, so we don't believe that any specific style is the right style, that you got to figure out what works so for you. So how does someone get into yoga? Is this something you've been trained to do your whole life and what you've done the um, whole time? Or? No, I started doing yoga after college. I didn't, okay. I didn't enjoy it very much until, um, I guess it was about now, six or seven years ago. Most people generally, sort of when something's out of control in their life, they think, oh, maybe yoga will help me right. control that. Right. Uh, and then you get in a yoga class and you realize... Um, that you actually can't control anything, but maybe that's learning to just be present and be right where you are. Um, so that's how it happened with me. I started doing a ton of it, started spending a lot of my own money doing it. And um, and here I am now running five stores, running five studios. So so you opened five studios in, in Nashville. Where are they in Nashville? So one right by Vanderbilt on okay. Elliston Place, right. one in Brentwood, okay. um, one in Franklin Cool Springs, right by the new Whole Foods. Ah, I walked past that one today. Actually, yes. I was going into East Spaces, and, and you're right there on the ground yes, floor. Yes, that's exactly where we are. Okay, mm-hmm. very good. Yes, and then uh, Chattanooga. All right, now wait a minute. <clears throat> so talk about that, because uh, it's one thing opening in Brentwood and then Franklin, but then Chattanooga. That uh, they creates some unique headaches compared to what you've gone <laughs> through in the past. It does. It does. Um, I have good people working for me, which is, you know, I think the the first rule, right, is to get right. the right people on the bus, is what they right. say. Um, so each studio has a manager, and then I do travel a lot between the studios um, to sort of be a, a regional type manager. Uh, but each studio has an individual manager who teaches there, who's responsible for the teachers, the other teachers who, you know, helps um, handle the clients, handle the retail shows up when so when they have the a sense of, of, of it's their store to, to be responsible they're the for boss and, right they, they they hire and they fire and they um do all the pleasant and the unpleasant things right and it's a great experience for them because uh, um, a lot of my managers are you know late 20s and um the studio in chattanooga has maybe 20 teachers so she's managing, you know, late 20s, and she's managing 20 people and managing a unit, you know, a standalone unit. So 20 people? Well. Teachers. Okay. Mm-hmm. So all part-time? So I have about 85 teachers uh, across all the studios, across all five studios. They are all part-time. And then I have about 10 employees, and about five of those 10 are full-time. 
And and uh, as you opened these stores, what was the biggest surprise you had uh, having something two hours, three hours away with the one in Memphis? Um, you know, the hardest thing is just getting a phone call, and I can't control it because right. I'm three hours away. Right. So um, we opened the summer in Memphis, and we you know had some alarm issues. The alarm kept going off in the middle of the night, and NCA is calling me and calling saying you. your alarm's off, and I'm panicking because I'm in Nashville, 200 miles away. So that is, that's been the hardest um, the hardest obstacle to overcome but it, you know having someone there to manage it that I believe in and that I can trust is is the only way I can do it and, and have you developed those those managers from within your own ranks or you brought people in or what what have you found to be Prim the most successful way to do that primarily uh, from within we have one girl that we just hired uh, from outside but she has a yoga background and she also has a retail background um, but primarily people who believe in what we're doing um, and who understand how we do it at Hot Yoga Plus. Because when I created the, um, the, the studios and my vision for the studios was very important that there's consistency. Because I traveled so much myself right. in my prior career and I would visit cities and had, you know, I might pay $20, $25 for a class and have no idea what I was gonna get. Right. So I wanted to be able to offer consistency so that when people come from Chattanooga or from Memphis, you know, to all the to opposite parts of the state, that they get their money's worth and that they know exactly what they're gonna get. So, so your plan is to grow this even further than, than you've done so Much far? Much larger, yeah. Interesting, and branding it and taking it out. and So so I know in working with other kinds of, of more retail kind of based operations, there's sort of this tipping point size when you really have to start thinking about a corporate infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Right now it's you. Mm -hmm. Right now you can handle five stores. What's the breaking point, do you think, in terms of that, from what you've seen so far? Well, the timing is interesting. I, that's, I'm sort of right in the middle of all of that right now. So have a so growth So you're kind plan. of there. I'm there. I have a growth plan um, to grow very significantly. A, a lot of focus is being put on the private equity, um, from pri the private equity industry on yoga right now. Really? A very large transaction was done about two months ago at a very high multiple. So a lot of capital. So time is good. Sudden, timing is very good. Um, Southeast is one of the areas that's a hole in the United States. It's very um, fractured, mom and pop. You know, no. I'm, I think I'm probably the largest chain in the United in the Southeast. Uh -huh. um, so the timing is very good, and um, the studio that the company that did the the deal with the private equity firm is out west in the Midwest and the Northeast. They have very aggressive growth plans, so I'm sure they'll come to the South. So it's put me in a position of it's time to. It's time to move. So you're you're having to raise some capital and raising capital, hire some staff, hiring and, a team, and, figuring and, out and, options and all those sorts of and, things. And how do you balance, you know, bringing in the right talent in terms of that kind of team, without over hiring so quickly that they're kind of s sitting around, maybe twiddling their thumbs, or 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 maybe pushing things in terms of what the business isn't ready for at that mm -hmm. size. Um, I think that we, I think that I've taken care of that because I've, I've tried to, well, I've done everything myself for so long, so many projects, you know, are on my to-do list. Right. Um, that I think I could keep anyone very, very busy that we have. Plenty to do. Right. It's been, I, I am definitely the sides business, a small business where it's going to make more sense to find people who are willing to work for equity. Right. Which is fun because you get, um, you get sort of that, that feeling of a company where we're all in it together and nobody's making much money, but this could all be fantastic for us someday. What's the, what's the first big thing you need to give up <clears throat> or you want to give up in terms of bringing on a key staff person? Is it finance? Is it marketing? Is it HR? Um, operations. I want a COO. I would like a COO. So my plan is to hire a COO pretty quickly. So you can focus on... on so I can on, focus on M&A. So right. I can go out and do raise the um, money acquisitions, and raise the money, de novos, and acquisitions. So you see yourself maybe buying some mom and pop stores along the way and Definitely. converting them? Definitely. It doesn't make sense. You know, if you think about um, the cities in the southeast, every, almost every big city, well, not almost every big city and, and a lot of smaller cities have yoga studios. And it doesn't make sense for me to go in and, and try to take away those customers. So I'll go in and try to find the studios that are interesting um, and, and do acquisitions. And, it's a, you know, it's a, because it is so mom and pop and, and not necessarily sophisticated studio ownership, um, it, it's a great buying opportunity for someone like sure. me who has a background that I can understand. Yeah, it's I'm great doing. for them because they've probably taken it beyond what they're able to and do. And there are so not far. many buyers out there. Right. I mean, there are not many buyers. Um, uh, you know, one standalone yoga studio, unless it's unique, is is you know you're going to work really hard for not a ton of money. So um, it's it's hard work. So they're they're glad to find a buyer. I think. So 
watch out. There'll be a hot yoga, sto uh, hot yoga plus studio coming soon to town near Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Very cool. On Thanks for corner. being here today. Thanks for having Enjoyed me. Enjoyed it.